Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest is going to be seen every Sunday at Death of the Weekend. Please welcome Brock Wilbur! I want to go That on? At all? Do we need it? No? Alright. Hey guys, how we doing? Woo! You guys doing good? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Did you forget we're all gonna die alone? I haven't. That's why I'm up here with this mic that doesn't work. Hey, uh, <laughs> thinking about death a lot. Why is that? Just had a birthday. Um, 28, so you know, near death. And for my birthday, I filmed a comedy special. Uh, by the way, if you have a birthday coming up, may I suggest the theme of comedy special. It's goddamn amazing. You put a hundred strangers in a room and you just scream at them for two hours. And they enjoy it somehow. And you can scream at them about your problems as if it's their fault. Just walking around like, 28! How is it that this isn't fixed? Or better? That's on you, man. Oh my god, it's amazing. Um, and somebody must have had fun because they set up a... Uh, a tip jar at the back of the room, and I didn't know about it. Some people put in money. I was like, oh, that's nice, because every little bit helps. And at this point, like, I'll never look at my credit score again. Like, that number, you have to divide by zero to find it. It's, it's probably terrible. But uh, the next day, I went to see a psychiatrist for the very first time. Uh, and because it's something about screaming at a room full of people for two hours about your problems that you're like, maybe it's not on them to fix this. Maybe, maybe that's something I could take an active hand in. Um, so, I wish I was making this up. This is completely true. And the universe has never been this awesome to me before. The amount of money it cost to see a psychiatrist who would fix my brain problems was the exact amount of money in the tip jar from the comedy special. <laughs> I've never seen such a beautiful, that would be like if I suddenly burst into flames right here and you guys tipped me the exact amount of water it took to extinguish that. <laughs> Not more water, I would've went just enough. Oh my God, it was so great. And then uh, he said to me, I got some stuff I can prescribe you, might help fix some things. And like any good creative person, um, it's like, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I won't be funny or interesting anymore if I improve my mental health. And then he was like, oh, I work with a lot of experimental drugs and a lot of things that people are testing. And I was like, that's not, you had me at experimental drugs. <laughs> so I look forward to a, a, a whole year of comedy for me that's just like, hey guys, you know what I hate about these eight hour long boners? <laughs> All the ghosts, aren't they? <laughs> that's awful. Um, so, uh, the Friday right before my comedy special taping, I uh, was driving to the venue and was late because uh, I'm 28 and I've still never been on time for anything in my life. Why haven't you fixed that yet? <laughs> I actually have a guy for that now, you're safe. Um, and uh, I looked in the rearview mirror and there was a girl in the car behind me taking pictures of herself while she drove her car. Doing the like goldfish face, whatever the hell that is, I don't get. And uh, I said out loud, I wish she would be in a car accident. And the genie heard me, because guess who plowed into the back of me at 10 miles an hour? Like, enough to know that, like, I'm going to be delayed, but not enough to actually have to do anything about it. So my head went into the steering wheel. Awesome, we're back. Oh, that's great. So my head went into the steering wheel, uh, mostly out of frustration. Uh, and, uh, and as I'm looking down, I looked into the cup holder and I saw something. This thing has been in my car for four years. I cannot explain to you how it got there, but I do know I've never removed it because I thought the universe would provide a reason that it was supposed to be there. Brief aside, I don't prank. I don't prank people. I don't prank people because I grew up with the kids that were the gods of pranking. Like, you couldn't just prank somebody. You had to declare prank war, and when you wanted it to end, you had to come up with how you were surrendering and give it to them in a parlay, like a pirate, like old sea dogs. That's, I was like, oh, you have an escalation. Like, I can't be a part of this. So I don't prank, but here I am in the car and I look down into the cup holder and what is there is a vial, a container of fake blood. She hit me with her car. I'm not gonna make her pay anything, but it would be nice for society if someone learned a lesson today. <laughs> So we pull over into a little mini mart by the side of the road. Uh, I dab a single dab of blood on my, a single dab. And we get out, we're looking at my car, and she's like, well, you know, we could trade like insurance if you, uh, 
Okay, well, I should go. She saw that I was bleeding from the head and tried to make a break for it. Like, if there wouldn't have been people around, she just would have killed me with a wrench and thrown me in the trunk of her car. I'm not having anything to do with this. So that's when the escalation occurs. Turns out that little bit of fake blood that had been sitting there for three years uh, in a hot, muggy Los Angeles day becomes a lot more blood than you would think. And suddenly, the elevator scene from The Shining is just recreating itself <laughs> on my face and my clothes to the point that even though I'm pretending I don't notice this blood, I had to do this and just keep going. This is when the escalation occurred as from the mini mark behind me, an Iranian woman came out and started shrieking. And I don't speak Iranian, but in any language, you know the phrase, murder most foul. So she sees me trying to get in the car and drive away. She's like, no, this cannot happen. The other girl is trying to sprint away. I say to both of them, hey, I'm fine. Have a good pancake. Iranian woman doesn't speak English, but she knows something's wrong with that. I get into the car, drive out the wrong way, out the exit. Um, <laughs> and as I look in my rearview mirror, all I see is the Iranian woman shaking the girl. Had I known I was good enough at pranks that I could make an angry Iranian woman shake a dumb teenager, I would have been doing it for years! Oh my god! Um, and later that night, the police showed up at my door. Escalation. Uh, turns out that uh, the Iranian woman had then written down my license plate, and the police spent all day looking for the man with the bleeding, uh, just driving around LA, and I had failed to register my car or my license to my new apartment, so when they were done writing me tickets for all of that, turns out that three days before my comedy special, I pranked myself out of the cost of my comedy special. Thanks, society. Somebody learned a lesson that day. Please buy my special, and please do not prank people. Thank you guys for being here tonight. being on the show. That was great. <laughs> I hope that this appearance on the show hasn't cost you anything because you're not getting anything out of it. <laughs> okay. All right. No car crashes on the way home. Promise? Promise. All right. Big swear. You, uh, what, what was the verdict from the psychiatrist? The prognosis. <laughs> prognosis. Um, I'm not sure if this is a medical term or not, but three times during our interview, he said, um, <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that in the DSM-4? It might be in the new DSM-5. That might be uh, no, he actually, he, this is right, he said to me, Brock, I don't think that you're depressed. And I said, that's awesome. I don't think you're very good at this. <laughs> I'd like to prescribe you a copy of the special and we can compare notes. <laughs> so you're a clean bill of health, then. Mostly, man, yeah. Except for the... I've uh, gotten that on dates, but never from a doctor. <laughs> the, the problem is that he actually told the health insurance company about all the stuff that he found, so I won't be seeing him again, because they were like, oh, he's not depressed. We're not going to cover him because he's not a danger to anyone. I wasn't sad enough to be in the danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> that makes financial sense to keep covering you. So that's the end of me improving as a person. <laughs> You're not a threat to anybody, but you're not really doing anything for yourself. Right. So that's a tough spot to be in. <laughs> no, but you're not alone. We're all comedians here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me, sir.